This little guy, it's called the Toyota Yaris. It is one of the smallest Toyotas you can buy here in North America, and it starts at a very frugally priced $14,000. Once you start loading on the options, you end up with this, the SE model. <laughs> this little guy will set you back around $20,000. So what do you get with that? Well, you get a small economical car that'll be reliable until the end of days. The engine under this little hood is a 1.5 liter. It's good for 106 horsepower and it's connected to a four-speed automatic. In the back, wow, I didn't even have to move the seat forward. That's actually not bad. Room for a suitcase and underneath a full-size spare. Neat. This being the 2015 model in a very competitive market, Toyota, of course, has made some improvements. The face has undergone a lift. It's a little bit sportier looking. The wheels are a very aggressive windswept multi-spoke, at least here on this SE. Inside, you have sport seats that are exclusive to the SE model. So does this little car have what it takes to beat its rivals? Let's take it for a drive and see. So overall, there's nothing fancy here. There's no lasers, heads up display, turbochargers or anything like that. This is basic transportation, albeit a fully loaded basic car. Let's turn it on, see how it works. Look at that. So the key has lock and unlock, which is nice, but it is a traditional key. Uh, the gauge cluster is a pretty straightforward affair, but it does have a tack. Sometimes the smaller subcompacts don't have tax. Um, so this is actually a pretty nice little display. Good for doing business. Oh, and on the steering wheel, I see that we also have stereo controls. Very nice. Let's look at the rest of the cabin here. Uh, the design is actually, I think, pretty pleasing. They do a really good job of introducing some organic shapes that help break up what would normally be a rather mundane interior. Very often these lower cost subcompacts are pretty basic. This one though has some nice metallic trim. Uh, that's courtesy of this being the SE package. Uh, it also has this kind of cool plasticized soft rubber dash, which actually, actually I think that's pretty neat. I like that. One of the main features in the SE here is this car is also optioned with the nav system. Um, it is a touch display. You can go to apps, click on map, it's fairly brisk, it has some nice looking icons. It is a lower resolution display because this is a less costly display than what you're gonna find in the higher end vehicles. Still, it provides an option that I think is very favorable in this price range of car. So we can go to our, our typical search of a POI by name. We'll type in uh, near our current position. We'll type in Starbucks. Well, that's, you know, that's really quick. Although I don't like it being lowercase on the display. I'm used to my keyboards having uppercase, say so Starbucks, okay. POI search and process. And there we go, there's our options. Lots of Starbucks nearby, go figure. Uh, we can also do audio. Let's turn audio on here. We have AM, FM, auxiliary inputs. There's a couple auxiliary inputs down here, um, both for USB and for traditional mini jack. Let's see, air con is pretty straightforward. You get big dials right in the middle. Increase the fan, turn on defrost. It's all fine, you get a big dial for hot or cold. It's good, straightforward, like it. Before we take off here, let's adjust our seat. We have, oh, we got lots of levers. We can go forward and back. And I can, uh, what's that one? Oh, height. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, steering wheel is adjustable. I can adjust it up and down. Uh, this one does not telescope. So let's go ahead there and take it for a ride. Okay, let's uh, slow it up here and let's just see how much power we can get out of this engine. 1.5 liters, go. <laughs> okay, so you're not gonna buy this car for the horsepower. 
Um, you would probably more likely buy it for the 30 miles to gallon around town, 36 on the freeway. That right there is probably worth the price of entry. So this car has the sport suspension. Let's go into the corner briskly and see how it does. Turning is pretty good. Road feel is a little on the spongy side, but definitely better than the base model. I have driven the base model and I do like the suspension in the SE better. It has less body roll. The transmission is the same in both cars, so that is not gonna vary at all. I do have to say, I really like these seats though. These are actually really comfortable for an entry-level subcompact. Usually the subcompact seats double as a form of torture. Not so in this car. So if you were looking at a car like this, it would probably be a day-to-day -day commuter. Um, would this be a car that I would be happy commuting in? Yeah, sure, yeah. It's a pleasant experience. The motor has enough horsepower to get you up to speed and to have a little bit of passing power. Um, I think overall, it's really nice. One thing else that I really like about this car are the looks. I think the nose and the sides, it kind of is a, it's a playful, fun, yet very sophisticated looking little car. And, and I really like that. I think that's nice because you don't want a car that looks cheap. And it's nice because this car, it starts at just around $14,000, but it doesn't look like it does. It looks like a car that is more expensive than what it really is. When you're shopping for a car like this, there's one question you have to answer. Is this a car I'll be happy in? You know, be it driving the kids to school or will it be commuting to work? And I'd have to say that, you know, for a lot of people that need an inexpensive, practical car, this is an excellent choice. The updates they've done for 2015 make the nose look better, make the interior look a lot better. Um, and I'd say overall, it's not a bad choice. So that's my look at the 2015 Toyota Yaris. It's a cheap and cheerful little car that you can actually load up with quite a few really nice options. For AutoNation, I'm Ryan Douthit. We'll see you again real soon.